you're going to take that flathead and there's an edge to it. You're just going to grab an edge and it should pop right on out. Now if you look very carefully at this white connector, one side you'll see two exposed wire leads with a tiny little nipple on it, one side with neither or any of that. The side that has those two exposed wires and the nipple is the side towards the top. That little nipple gets held in by a little hole right there. We'll remember that for later. Now, these two power leads are just held in by tension clips. So what we're going to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, very gently keeping a firm grasp on the heat sink itself. We're going to do one at a time and we're just going to slowly try and work them down and coming off of the terminal lead. Slowly and it should just come right off. We're going to repeat with the other one. Now, now we can take our entire diode heatsink assembly and remove it. Now, if you can see that diode, <coughs> I'm going to try and get out of the light here, you can see that dark brown burnout spot of the diode. That's why your lamp has looked like junk for a while. Compared to your nice new replacement diode on which there is no burnout. <coughs> That's why your lights look like junk. So, for the time being, we're going to set this entire assembly to the side so that we can clean the fixture entirely, get it all nice and clean before we bring in the new replacement. So, again, keeping in mind that this fan is floating, we need to be very careful. Your best tools for cleaning out a movie light fixture, you're going to want some just compressed air for blowing out all the, the junk and the dust that's in there. You're going to want some contact cleaner to spray on to any of the moving parts, any of the electric circuitry here. kind of just cleans it. And then you'll also want to take a nice screen, I recommend screen cleaning solution and a good microfiber cloth for actually cleaning the glass and the lenses. So first step, we're just going to blow out all the junk. A good tool set for having your workplace, because you're going to be blowing out all of this dust that's going to go somewhere, you don't want it landing back in your workstation. I recommend just taking a small little circular fan, placing it on your workstation, blowing away from your station, so that when you come in and you blow all this dust, it's going to be actively blown away. You can see here on this circuit board, it's just coated, coated in dust. Take your air and just blow it. And you can see that fan is assisting me by blowing all of the dust away from my workstation and help cleaning it. You want to do your best to blow out any visible dust, both from circuitry and from any of your gobo wheels. You can help spin them around, getting their clean off. If you get a little bit of that liquid spray coming out of your air, you're not that badly off. Just try and keep it as best as you can. Again, being very cautious that that fan is being held on by almost nothing. You want to just be careful on how you're rotating and working with the fixture. Same deal, taking the fan, blowing with your compressed air, trying to blow out as much of the dust as you can. You see, if you have access to any of the side walls where you see a bunch of dust, you can take just a gentle cloth and blow those out or just rub them out. So, next we're going to try and start working on cleaning the lenses. Now, again, I told you I'm not going to get all the way in so that I can reach all of the internal lenses. It requires taking out multiple frames, multiple assemblies, a little bit too much work for what we're going to do. Besides, just replacing this diode, you're going to notice an incredible amount of difference. But, for trying to get what we can do, I recommend having a tool, something that's got a, a fairly long, I'd recommend some of the 8 inch to 12 inch long, where you can actually take your microfiber cloth, wrap that tool so you're not scraping anything, apply a little bit of your screen cleaning compound to your cloth, and with your best and it, most caution that you can apply, there's an open slot on this side where you're able to get your tool in. You can push it in and you should be able to see internally where you're cleaning the, the, the lens inside. Be gentle not to push too hard, just kind of rub it as best you can. We're just trying to get any of the bulk off. Again, like I said, we're not really getting in there to really polish those lenses. We're just trying to remove any of the dust I can. Next, we're going to try and also remove any of the dust off of the focusing glass, the focusing lens. Same deal, we're just pushing up it against it as best we can. 
Then we're going to actually come in, we're going to push that focusing lens as far as we can to the front so that we can actually take our cloth and just manually clean the front of that focusing lens. You'll be able to get a good bit of it off from here and you'll notice a good difference. From here, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit more air, just trying to blow up anything that our, our clean cloth might have kicked up, trying to blow up on the bottom of the lens and the top, you see how that dust just came out? Do your best just to clean what you can. Also, don't forget to clean your prism. Just a good couple wipes over the top. You should be able to look and see on the prism if you have streaking. Just go ahead and hit it a couple more times. Very good. Now, if you want to get super more cleanliness, by all means, go ahead. For the most part, that's a fairly decent cleaning to get it all well done. Now, we've got a clean fixture. We need to go ahead and put it to the side for the moment, and we're going to go ahead and replace the diode on the lamp housing itself. So, we're going to take it where we had it. It is important that you know before you start this project that you have the right tools. Almost all of the screws on the fixture itself are handled with a Phillips head screwdriver. You also need your C-wrench, possibly a good pair of needle nose pliers. But some of the tools that you will definitely need are a good thermal compound cleaner, or in this case, a uh, yeah, thermal material remover. You can go to your general electronics store or something like that. This is important because this diode is actually sitting on top of this heat sink and being not held in place but insulated by this thermal compound. You need to remove this old thermal compound when you remove the old diode and you need to replace it. So when you remove it, it's pretty sticky. It's hard to get off just by hand. You need to go get some of this good thermal remover. It's not too expensive, maybe about seven, eight bucks, but you'll see how it really helps you out. Then you're also going to need to replace that thermal compound. Most of it comes in just a simple little syringe like this. They call it heat sink compound. It's the same stuff. So we need to go ahead and remove this diode first. It's held in place by two Phillips head screws. So we're going to take a screwdriver. We're going to go ahead and just remove those first two screws. You will notice that these screws probably have a little bit of the thermal compound on them. Don't worry, it's not hyper toxic or anything along those lines. Just be sure to wash your hands after you're done. Once we've removed both screws, that diode will come off fairly easy. But if you're having any problems getting it stuck or anything like that, I recommend a pair of vice grips or some other tool similar that allows you to get a parallel grip on something. You can simply just grab the diode on both sides and it'll pop right off. Again, you'll notice it, the bottom of it is coated in that thermal compound, as is the heat sink itself. The diode we're now done with, we're not going to use anymore, so you can throw it away. We need to clean off the heat sink. So we're going to take our thermal compound remover. Now, read the directions based on which thermal compound you get. This particular one might be made by a company called ArctiClean. The first compound is the actual remover. You need to kind of douse the area in that compound remover and you need to let it sit for about 30 seconds. That's what this particular model says you need to do. Read yours, it may say something different. So we're gonna let that sit. Then we're gonna take something just like a paper towel or in this case I'm using a shop towel. Anything will do, you just need to be able to remove that compound. Uh, you'll see pretty quickly that it's starting to actually break the compound down and able to make it easier to remove. So, once we've gotten that, we're going to go ahead and just wipe it. You see it just starts coming right off. If you need to do this multiple times, that's okay. This particular remover compound advises that for a second application of this purifier, and essentially what this is doing is it's cleaning the surface so that when you apply the new compound, it's going to bond better. Same deal, just saturate the entire surface a good bit. We're going to let that move around and sit on it. You don't need, this particular one, you don't need to let sit as well. You can just wipe this one off. This is just prepping the surface for the new compound. So, now we've cleaned our diode surface. We're ready to apply the new diode. We're going to take it. This particular diode 
has shipped to us where the manufacturer indicated where the positive and negative lead are. Some may come like that, some may not. You need to look onto the actual circuit level of the board. It may be indicated on that particular location as well. This is important because it needs to be lined up with the terminal lead, or excuse me, the terminal wires coming from the fixture. I'll show you which is which in a minute. But for your advisement, red cable is the positive lead, black cable is the negative lead. So, we now have cleaned our surface. We have our new diode. We're going to take that thermal compound and we're going to take the bottom of the diode and we're going to apply a, I wouldn't say over amount, just a fairly generous amount to it. That should be just about enough. Now, you're going to take this, bear in mind, the leads of this new diode chip are to be positioned away from the direction that that heat sensor lies. So in this particular diode, and I've seen a couple different types on this block, mine has these two terminal locks here and one at the bottom. Yours may be the same, maybe the different. Best idea to do is just take a picture of your particular block before you remove the old diode so you have a good idea. So we're going to take this diode and we've got that third.